in 2008, Oregon expanded Medicaid eligibility for 10,000 people by, through a lottery. Since some people got Medicaid coverage and others did not, based on random assignment, it made a case that researchers like you could study. What can Kansas learn from Oregon's experiment that expands Medicaid coverage for some adults? I think we learned a lot from the Oregon experiment about both the costs and the benefits of expanding Medicaid. On the cost side, we saw that people used a lot more health care. They went to the emergency department more and the hospital more, as well as going to the doctor more and using more prescription drugs. So it costs money to expand Medicaid. On the benefit side, we saw that people had much more financial security once they had insurance, and they also had much better mental health. Their physical health didn't improve in a way that we could measure, but people did report feeling much better. So there's a mixed bag on the benefits to weigh against those costs. It's easy to imagine how a medical emergency could devastate someone financially if they don't have health insurance. But what are some of the less obvious financial effects of being uninsured? We looked at credit reports and we found that people were much less likely to have a bill sent to collection if they had insurance than if they were uninsured. They were also less likely to have to borrow money or skip paying other bills and much less likely to have catastrophic out-of-pocket expenses. That's really important for people because bad events on your credit report affect not only your ability to get a loan, but also sometimes your ability to get a job or rent an apartment because a lot of people check your credit report. It's also not good for the healthcare system because when people have bills sent to collection, those are bills that are really never paid. So that represents care that providers delivered that they weren't reimbursed for. What kind of economic factors should states like Kansas consider when evaluating whether to expand eligibility for Medicaid coverage? I think it's important for policymakers to know that it's going to cost money to expand health insurance to low-income uninsured adults, although in the case of Medicaid, most of that funding comes from the federal government, not from state funds, but that those costs in terms of increased health care use are going to lots of care that is likely to promote health in the long run, preventive care, access to high quality care, having a doctor who's your doctor, and that produces improvements in mental health and in self-reported health, if not immediate improvements in chronic diseases. Your work has focused on the health and economic impacts of expanded coverage. What are some of the indicators that you're looking for that show other people are healthier when they have insurance? We looked at a range of different outcomes. We asked people about how they were feeling and they told us that they were feeling much better. We did a clinical assessment of depression where we asked people a battery of questions that's been shown to match up well with whether or not they have severe or clinical depression. We also took blood samples to measure cholesterol, blood sugar control for diabetes, we measured blood pressure, we measured height and weight for obesity. So that's a lot of the markers of adverse chronic health conditions that people suffer from. What's the next step then with your study in Oregon and, and tracking that population? What are the, the next indicators you're looking for, the next steps in that research project? We collected a wealth of data from this population, including hour-long questionnaires to really drill down into what the factors are that determined whether they saw health improvements or not, what kind of care they used, how their chronic conditions were managed, and we're going to be examining that data in much more detail. We also collected qualitative interviews where we asked five or 600 people about their experiences with the healthcare system to understand better how rolling out insurance to previously uninsured adults affects the way that they use care and ultimately their health outcomes. So there's a lot of rich detail that I hope that we'll be able to analyze in the years to come. What are the next steps? Is there a schedule of reports that are going to be released or are you waiting to see kind of where the data leads you? We're analyzing the data as fast as we can, and it's, um, we're, we're not collecting primary data anymore. Mm -hmm. The experiment is in essence over, but we have a lot of data that we did collect while people were insured or uninsured after the lottery that we have yet to analyze, and we're working as quickly as we can because we think this information is really important for policymakers who are considering whether to expand or not. How was the study funded, or who supported the, the development of the study and the, the continuation of it? Collecting this wealth of information from beneficiaries turned out to be a very time and dollar intensive effort. We got grants from both private foundations and from the federal government that enabled a really large scale data collection. We ended up getting surveys, uh, mail surveys from about 75,000 people at various points in time. We got physical specimens from 13,000 people. We got administrative data like 
hospital discharge data from 85,000 people. We got emergency department data for the greater Portland Metro area that covered about 25,000 people. So this is a lot of data. And that funding was really important because when you're looking for potentially small effects, you need really large sample sizes. Mm -hmm. 